Hey, welcome to this week on Golf and Around. Fall is in the air and we're here in beautiful Western Pennsylvania at the venerable Fox Chapel Country Club. Built in 1925, well, this golf course is one of America's top 100 country clubs. You know, back in 1925 when they were paying with perch and gutter balls and hickories, you could only get off the tees maybe, I don't know, 180 yards, I have no idea. I could get a perch and gutter ball maybe about 30 feet. But with modern technology and titanium and graphite and ball spin and flight and all that stuff and motion detectors and all that being used today, well, a 1925 golf course needed a little retouch up. The Fazio Group has come in here to the Fox Chapel Country Club and, well, did a slight redesign modernization by moving some bunkers, sand traps, and putting them into the field of play for the modern golfer. So let's tee it up this week on Golfing Around from the Fox Chapel Country Club. Rainer. Uh, Seth Rayner designed over 70 golf courses, it might be up to about 77. Sort of an unknown figure, he's the protege of Charles Blair MacDonald, who's self-proclaimed the godfather of architecture in the United States golf. Uh, I found in the 1962 U.S. Open magazine at Oakmont, every club's listed in Western Pennsylvania because they supported Oakmont in having the Open, they had volunteers, so everyone got a script about each club and what the club does and why it's there and what's the history. Well, ours has the regular history, Seth Rayner design, Charles McDonald, et cetera, et cetera. And then the last paragraph is the uh, superintendent and golf pro, Paul E. Rath, removed all the deep, side, deep green side bunkers and fairway traps. And it's the only documentation I can find where there's someone stating they tried to eliminate something on the golf course. 2012 through 2014 Senior Players Championship on the Champions Tour. And that really started putting the golf course, um, so to speak, on the map, um, where all these excellent players were really, um, art, their architect history is very good. Ben Crenshaw, Tom Watson, Tom Kite, they're all in architecture after they've played. And so they really had some great things to say about the layout and we would always hear that there's a lot of good bones a lot of a lot of a lot of good bones to the course so you could tell um, where bunkers could have been might have been how the design was and going back to 2014 or 15 the, golf, the club was looking at redoing the bunkers just because of the wear and tear and that initiated a master plan and so the club elected to hire Fazio Design to do the master plan and that included new tees forward, new tees back, bunkers replaced, bunkers moved, bunkers taken out, uh, green expansion, etc. And so in 2016, they started the tee project. We've, we've added to that project or have done that this year as well as the bunkers. That's sort of an ongoing program. We have other bunkers that we would re-level. We have some bunkers that we would add if we were choosing to. And so we're in the middle or moving towards the end of a process where um, the golf course has been restored and now you're sort of updating it in the current design with um, all of these new bunkers and tees and making it a little bit more interesting for the player. So, so we had some interesting, this is actually somewhat noteworthy based on what I said about the aerials. Um, we have some interesting 
what I will call template holes, but they're familiar holes to all the golf around the world. Uh, number four is a road hole, um, which was not a road hole until this year. It's, a, it's actually a reverse road hole. The road bunker is on the right-hand side of the green. We have the two um, road bunkers along the sides on the left, and we have the spectacle bunker out on the right side of the fairway. That's noteworthy because most of the golf the golf holes that are replicas of the 17th hole at St Andrews, the bunker is the road bunker is on the left hand side, mm. so it's a little bit unique that we have one on the right. It goes along with number six as a reverse redan. It's one of the more noteworthy par threes in the country, but ours goes from left to right instead of right to left. So there's something behind that meaning when he designed number four as well to put the bunker on that side, um, which is very which is very um, exciting to, to play in that way. Uh, we redid the green on four to kind of create a Redan style so that the ball would sort of run towards that road bunker, kind of as you see on 17 with the road behind and then the bunker on the left. And then we have number nine, which is a, um, I think the hole from St. Andrews is number 14. Um, it's high hole, I think is the name, but don't quote me. And we and it's been used as the lion's mouth. There are not many lion's mouths left in the Rainer design. The club took it out um, in the 50s. It's a bunker recessed in the green. Mm. Um, so we actually found the original bunker. It was about two or three feet deeper than we've made it. But it also had some topography a little bit different of the time, where it was a little bit more slanted, a lot more unused green to play from. So the Fazio, um, Tom Marzoff, the architect, along with the superintendent, Jason Hurwitz, it made more sense to make it a little bit more level with that bunker in the middle of the, in the front of the green. Um, that's another iconic hole that you don't see very much. And then the biggest or the most changed hole that we have is number 16 and it's actually called the bottle. It's the 14th, 12th or 14th hole at Sunningdale. And the bottle has three bunkers running diagonally through the fairway with four bunkers on the right, it's right behind you, and three bunkers on the left. We don't have a principal nose bunker, but we have a cross bunker in front of the green. about this golf course you oh. know every inch of it oh every inch of it man i love the greens they're complicated and they can make them run quick they can have them running slow uh, it's an excellent course got to be good out of the sand hit a good fairway shot every time off the tee and you should be in good shape you like the redesign love it man i think we'll have more people coming out here next year and what what is the redesign done to the the average golfer to make them work harder to get around them? What's it done for the average golfer? Yeah, well, uh, they have some changes here that kind of helped out the ladies uh, improve the the tees where they place them. They're a little shorter now. Otherwise, though, yeah, a lot of the bunker placements have made it harder for the longer hitters. All right, get out of here. Yeah, hey, have a good one, man. The life of a caddy, ladies and gentlemen. There he goes. He's got the legs of an ox. <laughs> Fox Chapel every day of the year because I'll tell you why. Here you can have some bad shots and still get away with it and enjoy the round. Fox Chapel so uh, Oakmont is so penal that a bad shot over there and you're subjected to the horrors of the course. 
Club is great. Great membership. Uh, they, they really take care of this golf course, yes. keep it up to shape, and, and we just love playing here. It's such a familiar camaraderie type club and organization, and they really do a very good job of, of ma maintaining the club. You like the redesign? I love the redesign. I'll tell you what, hole number four green right over here is tremendous. Hole nine is tremendous. Uh, but what they've done is they've softened the bunkers, which I think makes the play a lot better for everybody. But they've done a great job on the redesign and made the course uh, a lot more interesting. The redesign has been incredible. Uh, some of the new new features they put in, such as number two, they put in uh, the, the, the new bunker runway up there that uh, makes it a lot more interesting hole. Um, the sand traps are just in, incredibly challenging. And uh, just all of that along with the, the, the historical nature of this club and uh, the traditions that are here are, are just fabulous. For somebody that's not from the Pittsburgh area, I mean, certainly they've heard of Oakmont and Laurel Valley. Uh, this certainly ranks up there with its. Oh yes, yes. This this ha this is definitely uh, one of the top, uh, I'll say, top four courses uh, after the ones you've just mentioned. And uh, any chance I get to come down here, I, I, it's always an enjoyable day.